Tiffany and Brad here with Years and Years, and it's this week in Disney for February 14th to... Love week! That's right, February 20th. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. All week long. Mm-hmm. That's right. Love is in the air. <laughs> it's true. It is. Today is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's awesome. We're heading to MK, mm -hmm. of course, Magic Kingdom. So yeah. we have a magical Valentine's Indeed. Day. <laughs> For sure. Our Valentine's Day two years ago, yes. right before closings, was so memorable. So mm -hmm. really look forward to having all the magic that's back in our V-Day yeah. evening. And there's always something special going on. Um, like on Valentine's Day and other holidays at the park, like on the specific holidays like Easter and Valentine's Day. And oh, what about St. Patrick's Day? We've never been. I'm sure at Epcot. It's like totally we, a part of the experience. We don't go to the park somewhere. Yeah. I think it's Easter because day. we're Chicagoans <laughs> and it's like, we're like, yeah. hey, where's the river? We're turning green. You know? It's like, <laughs> Do they do anything in here? I mean, it's like, they can't Where's be doing anything parade? as exceptional as changing a body of water's color. Gotta watch Ferris Bueller. I don't, they don't do that in there. What? They, they, they don't change the river in Ferris Bueller, but yes, they go over the bridge. No, so. they, he goes in the parade. Oh, of course. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Twist and shout. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there for you sure. Go. You're right. Awesome. It is the St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Schooled, but school mm. us on Disney. Yeah, so let's get into this week. So this week, our big topic for this week is a person who was born on Valentine's Day. So artist Paul Wenzel, uh, best known for his 42-year career at Walt Disney Company, creating illustrations for movie posters and retail merchandise. Yeah. 42 years. 42 years. Born on Valentine's Day. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Like really sweet to be born Very on Valentine's so. Day. Little Cupid. Yeah. Yeah. But his work, I mean, graphical in nature, marketing in nature, and something like you're very familiar with. Like if you saw his yeah. poster, you'd be like, oh, those are the posters so, I love. Yeah, we'll get into all the movies that he, you know, worked on, but it's actually super essential. You don't think about marketing necessarily when you well, see <laughs> films. Well, I'm saying like when you yes. go see a film normally like you might consider the credits if you stay for them you might consider the people behind everything mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't realize like that movie port poster or the trailer that they put together is something that is going to affect like how many people go to see a film <laughs> it's so yeah. important well, and so his job was really essential yeah while paul wenzel didn't do the return of the jedi poster that was the really well maybe it was the dark crystal one but like the I dark mean, crystal was no, yeah, no, meaning he didn't do so any of them. I'm, did, I'm, I'm um, saying, well, I'm saying yeah. that those were the posters that really affected you. Affected me. <laughs> it's interesting you mention the Star Wars one because the one that he did for, um, I'm trying to think which one it was. I think it's Dragon Slayer. Okay. Yeah. Go look at that. If you just look up Dragon Slayer, sure. it'll show the, the movie poster for it. Yeah. And I thought that was a very like Tatooine Star Wars look. Okay. For, but to yeah. me, it, it and it was. It's it very was, pulp fantasy, like a big dragon, like, yeah. Yeah, but it was after, so that was 81. Right. So it was after, you know, the first Star Wars. Star, Indeed. Star Wars film Indeed. came out. So yeah. anyway, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. But getting back. It was I mean, around the like time of like Crawl and Time Bandits and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it looks unique in that yeah. arena. Yeah, but he did um, Mary Poppins. That, that poster is really interesting because I feel like that poster almost has nothing to do with the movie. When you look at it, you're kind of like, that's so interesting. But sure. I could see how it would draw people in. And it yeah. wasn't necessarily, the posters aren't necessarily to depict exactly what's happening in the film. They actually um, were different. Like they were more showcasing the stars that were going to be in it, mm -hmm. what you could expect in the film. He did a lot them. of head shots, a lot of heads. He did. He liked to use heads and he would like, there's a shot, there's a poster that he did of Walt Disney with like all the characters that were little around him. He so did he the same. Yes, we were going to get to that. I'm sorry. We'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. But um, like this picture with Walt Disney where the, the characters are little all around. That's a very 
Paul Wenzel thing to do mm -hmm. with his work. Sure. Um, but the Mary Poppins one's really interesting. Yeah, um, it, it puts the Mary Poppins title like as if it's up in lights on Broadway, like on a stand. Exactly. It's little bulbs. Exactly. Um, so it's creating yeah. this idea to you that this is going to be a huge film, mm -hmm. and it was oh, a yeah. huge film. So I, I think it's it's interesting. Yes. When you look at the Pinocchio poster, mm -hmm. that um, where he has Pinocchio, and then there's all this stuff kind of going in a circular way around it. That's in the a film, halo kind and, of, yeah. yeah, like, a, and that's the same that he does. He that's a technique of his that you see a lot in his posters, mm -hmm. and it, I don't know, it creates this. It's yeah. an interesting and he introduces feeling. Figaro and <laughs> and Jiminy in it. Like, yeah, it's very good. Yeah, he covers cool. it. Um, so there's lots of them. Now he also did live action po posters and one of my favorite is Herbie Goes Bananas. So go check out that poster. If you just look up the film, it'll show you the original poster. So that's his artwork. Um, and so I love it cause there's just like this giant banana. That's the focus. Mm -hmm. And then the, it, the, I love this because this really makes me think of Brad. He's been in marketing for so many years and, um, just going and learning about him made me think of you and like the things that you've had to come up with in marketing and well and looking and at his and style done. you yeah. know looking at his style like i'm very influenced for that by that time period and right the the art of rock and rock posters yeah he's very much there yeah very much there if yeah. not a voice that influenced subconsciously many other artists yeah myself included yeah for sure uh, because all these posters like are just in the back of our minds. Oh, yeah. They influenced us. And they're um, very period, but yet yeah. age very exceptionally well. well. Pete's Dragon, it's another one where Pete is the center. And then like Brad was talking about, there's the heads of characters in the film. Mm -hmm. But this it introduces fireworks. There's not even fireworks in the film at all, right? Maybe Are a little there? tiny bit. For some reason, this poster really makes me think of Electrical Light Parade. It does. Which is like it has that foreshadowing the future, <laughs> but it's kind of interesting. Isn't it's that funny. the second time that you've said that he foreshadows yeah. the future? And again, he's using so, the up and light standard. Yeah. Um, with the title. Thinking. He's, yeah. I think he's a really cool artist. And his palette's incredible. Mm -hmm. His his understanding of color and his. Yeah. Uh, his acceptance of color's vividness and his willingness to use it is exceptional. Yeah. Now, Black Cauldron, Black Cauldron, that's a good one to go check out. Yeah. Especially if you don't like Black Cauldron, maybe you will love the poster. It's exceptional. <laughs> I like the movie. Yeah, it captures sure. the entire, yeah. Yeah, it really, to me, has And it a was the cover of the paperback. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's awesome. It's really cool. I would say probably would the poster is what sold it to me. Because I, would, I didn't even get to see it in the theater when I was a kid, that? and I was so I into it. I would wear this as a t-shirt. Yeah. Like, this would be an epic t-shirt to have his particular poster. Yes, it's quite yeah, nice. Absolutely. Bring it back. Quite nice. <laughs> For sure. So, um, you guys, if you type in Paul Wenzel in Google, his whatever, and not just his posters, like, mm -hmm. all of the things that he's done. Okay. Um, yeah, so he's done so many things. So just clicking on images will bring up um, and it it shows you like just a plethora. And he did a lot of um, like Walt Disney specific things. And he always has the characters around Walt in a, you know, smaller. It's just so cute and, mm -hmm. and really personable. I would love to do that. Yeah, power. so you brought up the stamp. He is actually most well known for the stamp. The 1966 stamp. So the stamp was commissioned um, after Walt had passed away. And he's the one who um, did, oh, I'm sorry, 1968 stamp. Um, so it was artwork by C. Robert Moore and Paul Wenzel. And Moore designed the stamp and Wenzel painted the portrait. There you go. But if you look at it, to me, it's totally Paul Wenzel's style. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I just... It's hard not to see it if yeah. you look at all of his other work. With yeah. an acknowledgement of the culture of Disney and some yeah. nods to Mary Blair, as uh -huh. well as, um, again, exceptional use. Like he's got Cinderella's castle up at the top, like in a nice pink, like magenta stamp. Yeah. You know, he just yeah. tears it up. For sure. 
So also in the 60s, he went and did science fiction magazine. There you go. Um, he did you like space that. travel. Before the dark, the, the dragon mm -hmm. slayer. Yeah. Ga Galaxy science fiction, world of tomorrow, fantastic stories of imagination. So he did all that. Mm -hmm. Now, what's he up to today? Um, he actually retired in, to Prescott, Arizona, mm -hmm. and he does Native American artwork oh, for the Mountain Spirit Gallery. So check him out first, then go check out Mountain Spirit Gallery. That's where his art that he does now. He's 86, I believe. A youngin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And still producing beautiful yeah. art and it's cool to go see what he's doing now because it's all um you know it's not anything like he did with the posters it's beautiful pieces of art um so <laughs> definitely worth viewing um definitely impressed with him and all of his work indeed so exceptional yeah really such cool. contributions i mean really selling us on every movie before we right. see the opening disney logo and he, he ended up being like um, like an art director for merchandising and stuff and Easily. teaching in, at the end of his career with Disney, like toward the end, of course. So yeah. really impressive. So Happy probably a legacy birthday, to discover. Paul Winsel. Yeah. So he'll be 87 actually today. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> but moving on to the rest of this week, we're going to stay on valentine's day for a minute i hope so <laughs> today on. and all week and um to 2013 walt disney world celebrate celebrates valentine's day with love songs and a mm. mass wedding vow renewal Ooh. at um at the foot of cinderella's castle so 50 couples were selected through a promotion on the official disney parks blog um to yeah. gather disney the or the princesses Snow White, Cinderella, Aurora, and uh, respective princes perform on stage alongside Mickey and Minnie, of course. Wow. For Valen Isn't More princes. Cool? I think this is so cool. No, it is pretty cool. At yeah. first I was like, you know, I was like, I don't know. I'll let other people have that. I don't know that yeah. I want that experience. But then you like started like, oh, the cast of characters. And I yeah. was like, oh my gosh, this is a royal affair. Yeah. Maybe. Really cool. Maybe. I love these kind of, you know, yeah. I love these kind of things. I think they're so cool. Really cool. When they did different kind of promotional, you get to have this real like one-on-one yeah, -on -one experience in the parks. Yes. Well, one in, or 50 on one. <laughs> but still, that's a small group mm -hmm. considering how many people you're normally with. Yeah. Uh, but really cool Valentine's Day treat. So, and then moving on to February 15th, 1950, Disney's uh -oh. anime feature film, Cinderella is released. Now we talked about um, Cinderella for this day in Disney. So you guys can go check out that video if you haven't seen it, because we share lots about Cinderella. Um, but I kind of want to bring it up today because this was something that we didn't share as far as, um, you know, all the, there's so many, when you talk about these classic fairy tales, you know that they're based on tons of different versions. Yeah, stories from the past, from other cultures. Yeah, yeah. but Cinderella is so interesting to me because it actually has roots. There's a Chinese um, story of Cinderella, yeah. which is cool because um, basically like it's the whole story just set like in China with their culture, but the same kind of thing with the stepmother and abuse going on. What other countries too? Um, huh? What other ones too? You said there was another one or two. Like that. Yeah, but I was just going to share with the oh, Chinese please, one. Yes. Um, this one, there's like the losing of the shoe happens a lot. And she loses her shoe in this version. Um, and the king, or uh, the, the, the search for the shoe mm. is all part of the story. It's Always. just, just so a wonderful. little bit different. Yeah. But the original one was the other thing I was going to share. The oldest one is... Rhododiphus, a Greek courtesan living in the colony of um, in Egypt, whose name literally means rosy cheeks. Um, so that was the first recorded story okay. of like this, well, how this wonderful. concept. Yeah. And she her shoe is interesting because um, an eagle actually snatches her shoe and flies it and drops it on the lap of the king. Yeah. So. That's there you interesting. Go. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, 
just speaking of Cinderella, I <laughs> was recently asked um, just this last week, you know, what is your favorite Disney song? And oh. a dream is a wish your heart makes for me is number one. And it's from Cinderella. It's like, it's number one, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, you can have a favorite second, but like, I just think that song think so embodies For me, song. it's Feed the Birds. Fair enough. And that yeah. was Walt's favorite, so <laughs> very appropriate. But, no, it evokes emotions, like when you when they play that song. And yeah. he would go in and ask them to play that, the, oh, yes. the Sherman. When yes. I say they, I mean the Sherman Brothers. Indeed. But anyway, moving on to Please. February 16th. Um, on this day in 2018, Black Panther is oh. released. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that Fantastic. was cool. No, it was, it was so great. good. It was so good. It really was. Yeah. We love Black Panther. Yeah. I mean, you talk about a fantastic undertaking. Right. A complete creation of like textile and mythology and legend and history yeah. of like a continent and people. And yeah. it was done beyond convincingly and appropriately. I feel like it brought a lot of depth into the Marvel Cinematic uh, Universe and doing that, especially like then Doctor Strange yeah. too, it just bring, it really brought the world in in yeah. a good way. Everything, and made it for everyone. Yeah, everything was so yeah. North America, Europe before right. that. And yeah. like New York City even. New York specific. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. it just and then, immediately, it was like, because they had taken us out into space back. with Guardians of the Galaxy and everything, and then right. brought us home and gave us the whole world. Yeah. It yeah. worked. It really did. Yeah. yeah. It was smart on their part to get the world involved. For yeah, sales, really good. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> too. But okay. Black Panther is an incredible film. We loved what it. Kind of for sure. Absolutely. And then moving on to February 17th, 1934, Disney's Mickey Mouse cartoon, Camping Out. Go check this yeah. one out. It's released. This is Mickey, Minnie, Horace, yeah. Yeah. and Clarabelle. And Clarabelle. Okay, so it's all four of them. This is a situation where, um, you know, we have the Fab Five. There, There's a couple of car or a few cartoons where it was the Fab Four. And so and that was them. kind of their group. This yeah, group. yeah, this is the group yeah. that is hanging out and they're camping and there's um, antics that happen <laughs> in the beginning. Um, Clarabelle's making a cake. That's so Clarabelle, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking, can she's, you imagine? It, she's the kitchen float in the Christmas parade. <laughs> well, yeah, but can you imagine making a full cake with frosting while we're camping? I would never do that. Like, we've been camping many times, but I don't know if I would make a cake at camp Well, I think and you would. It. Yeah, I think you I think would. I and would. I'm not I think I would uncertain that my mother didn't do it because we were a camping family. I think that may have happened. Yeah. For real. Props to moms. We used to do, we used to be more like, you know, engage at camping and oh, yeah. bring food and make beer. a lot of food there. Oh, yeah. But then I think we got really, I, well, I kept I mean, trying to make it more simple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. we used to have, we used to be fully outfitted for outdoor, <laughs> like, living. Yes. But when we moved down here to Florida, we yeah. thought that we, we weren't going to do it anymore because of, like, of gators and away. stuff. And we gave everything away. <laughs> we did. But, but there's totally camping down here. We were yeah. so wrong. Yeah. That's okay. I'm I'm not quite ready for snakes and gators. Just the snakes you make. <laughs> <laughs> to be go. camping i'm fine we yeah. can we'll figure it out right. but go Thank check you, this one out yeah for, for sure camping. Check it out. and then 2017 walt disney world's animal kingdom turns on the lights at night for rivers of light there you go did you guys like this i That's really liked awesome. it i thought it was beautiful a great nighttime <laughs> show at animal kingdom um, it's not just that it's the pre-show it's yeah. the storytellers Love that are that. dressed that in their the garb. That was the original version. This is the original version. They're holding the lanterns yeah. and bringing the stories. Really beautiful. And they, it's done. They're not going to bring it back. I checked. It's retired. That's outrageous. Those floats and the stained glass. I'm like, literally, just float them down the river <laughs> right now. Yeah, it's so Why beautiful. build those epic, gorgeous, gorgeous water installations right. and not still parade them out? I don't know. There better be a good reason. And when they modified the version and, <sighs> and had the second version of it, Waste. they actually took away the storytellers out of it, which I didn't like that either. I didn't understand why. I, it was probably intimidating and scary for people who can't deal with narrative. 
Okay. Let's move on. I'm getting really upset. I am because I now I know it's gone and it's gorgeous. <laughs> well, and that's something we never got to see. No, I saw it twice. No, you were there with me. No, not that. Okay. It's okay. He's very heated about this. Because it's beautiful. I, I should have told you beforehand I that I found so. out it was retired. But um, there was a show called The Jungle Book Alive with magic, they were doing this in 2016. So we didn't actually get to enjoy that. We've never seen that. I don't know if any of you guys got to see it. It was a very short run, but it was taking so long to finish Rivers of Light that they um, they created this show in the interim. So very frustrating because to me, everyone loves Harmonious and Rivers of Light to me is like the precursor to Harmonious. Maybe. Which it's so anyway. good. It's, it's, yeah, it's I see so what you mean beautiful. by the projections and the lights. And the fountains. Yeah. They have You're fountains right. and everything. You're right. It's just gorgeous. I don't know. I miss Maybe it. that's what I'd it like is. Maybe they it. took the creative team or groups of it or technology mm -hmm. from it to build Harmonious as well. I don't know. Yeah. I don't It'd know. be interesting. We'd love to see it. Back, but I'd love but... to see those glass lanterns back. Because mm -hmm. it was just such a short time period from getting it to then 2019, yeah. then everything happened, or 2020, and then hearing that yeah. it's retired, it's kind of wow. sad. But All right, sorry, but we'll sorry for it. the bad news. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Love, Love we breaking hearts. <laughs> okay, then February 18th, <sighs> uh, 1953. This is a documentary released by Disney's People and Places. Um, it's called The Alaskan Eskimo. You can watch this on YouTube. It's beautiful. And it mm -hmm. did win an Academy Award for Best Documentary and Short Subject. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. Watch it for if you're just interested in how Eskimos live. They did a great job of explaining it and featuring it. So I really yeah. enjoyed watching this. And Amazing learning. conditions without all the benefits of technology. Well, they... <sighs> They were smart. They're yeah. so smart and figuring out what their their bodies needed, what they needed, how lots to dress, of <laughs> and lots Meaning of to eat it. thick, you know, animal yeah, coats <laughs> and things like that to stay warm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and then moving on to 1960. Uh, the Winter Olympics is in Squaw Valley, California. Okay. All right. Um, All right. So that was the Winter Games, of course. Walt Disney was actually commissioned with the head of pageantry, pageantry for games, which involved 5,000 participants, wow. 1,285 instruments, 2,645 voices wow. um, from 52 California and Nevada high schools. There you go. The opening ceremony delayed an hour because of the, the snowfall. Snowfall okay. includes daytime fireworks as a first for the Olympics. Really important about this though, John Hench designed a massive um, Tower of Nations located at the entrance of the valley. Okay, um, I've just seen pictures of that. Right, his unique Olympic torch design will be the basis for all future torches. Wow, really cool. imagine that. Yeah. There Disney was... connection to the Olympic torch. Also, there's 30 flagpoles for the flags participating of participating nations, and each flagpole has a plaque signed by Walt Disney, and these were distributed all over. There's one in um, Marceline element, at the elementary school there, um, the Disney Studio Commissary in Burbank. Um, so, wow. yeah, they're all what over. What an intense time, too, yeah. of like, nationalism. So it must have been crazy to be representing the it actually, world and the country. It actually set the stage in the, for the future of how they're like, they really were the ones who Disney actually made Olympics be what they are set a standard. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> so cool. So cool. And then another cool, moving on to 2008, okay. uh, Disney's Vero Beach Club. And this is so cool about the Disney like company just so involved in all these different things, but Vero Beach Club, we love. Oh We've my been goodness, there yes. a few times. It's really quite exceptional, guys. Like yeah, if you're there, in the DVC and hey, you want to utilize it. Even for, if yeah. you just are in Vero Beach for some reason. And you just want to go pop in for dinner, you they'll go take for you. for dinner, yeah. And get a Disney experience. Yeah, for sure, do it. <laughs> but, but this cool thing happened. Yeah, um, Hall of Famer. <laughs> Uh, Tommy Lasorda is officially him. named you know the him. resort's uh, recreation lawn Lasorda Field. There you go. 
So they dedicate the, and he throws the out the field ceremonial first pitch. At zero beat. Yes, on the one there. So isn't that cool? I think that's so cool. And there it's right go. there. It's so beautiful. Actually, we recently were over near there. They're redoing all the beaches over there. And yeah. they're they're redoing the beach right um, on uh, right zero. Right so yeah. don't go right now. I, I feel bad for guests right now because you can't get down to the beach like from their access. But um, once it's done, it's going to be even better. Yeah. So it needed to be done, right? Yeah. Like We don't live in Vero. We just do timing quite a yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's beautiful. It's yeah. definitely cool. cool. Yeah. So moving on to February 19th, this cartoon, 1952, another short, um, the Disney short Hel Hello Aloha is um, released. And this is Goofy being the businessman that he is, decides mm -hmm. to like drop that drama, the working man's life to go live in paradise right yeah. live in a tropical island yeah sounds good no shirt no <laughs> shoes no sir no problem That's no problem right? <laughs> we're pretty tropical and we love it yeah. um i could be more i, I mean i could be in a Someday. little bit warmer weather <laughs> this probably sounds ridiculous i'm yeah. so sorry but yeah. it does get cold no, here in central yes. florida <laughs> But it's getting bit. warm outside. It is. Don't hate us. It's getting nice outside. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. It sounds ridiculous, but I get really cold, and I'm I'm all yeah. about the She's hot weather. All, she had gloves on at Hollywood Studios last week. I posted People it People were in shorts and t-shirts, and yeah. I'm like... She got gloves. My hands were cold, you said. They my were hands cold. were freezing, so I, there you go. <laughs> I didn't say she was crazy. I said oh, thank she was you, cold. Buddy. Thank you for not thinking I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And moving on to um, 2021, Hong Kong Disneyland reopens because of go. all the stuff, but they reopen for their 15th anniversary. And guess what? They have a new castle, um, Castle of Magical Dreams. Yeah. Have you seen it? It's based off of like 12 of course, but, princesses. You know, I mean, they kind yeah. of merge together in your mind if you don't really try to keep them separate and no they this them is to this right one now. it's it's incorporating oh, all the it was different so princesses. gorgeous the palettes and yes the, or the palette and the yeah. gold yeah well, it's a good one it's representing 12 princesses so yeah. frozen snow white cinderella aurora belle jasmine pocahontas mulan aurora yeah, it's Mur it is yeah. it's a contend contender for one of the best mirda Elsa. Never going to take Anna, Moana. <laughs> get away from the cake. But, but you love the cake. I do that love was the a cake. Celebration thing. This is an I actual, want this cake is their actual kingdom. castle. No, this it's is gorgeous. How it is. No, it's beautiful. Yeah, you like it. Some people don't like it. Well, that's fine. It yeah, has we like it. a majestic clockwork, like intricate, mm -hmm. like element to it. It's so I think it's awesome. correct for Hong Kong. It, it just makes very... sense to me, especially Hong Kong being so influenced by so many different nations and mm -hmm. stuff. It's kind of cool to have mm -hmm. all these princesses come together yeah. for their castle. Yeah. It's interesting. I the, think yeah, there sense. are some porcelain elements and like the gold leafing yeah. on porcelain, like artistry that it nods to. It's really quite nice. We haven't seen it in person though. If yeah. you have, we'd love to hear in the comments for sure. And then February 20th, this is our last thing for this week last in one. 2002. It is reported that a brand new tombstone has been added outside of um, Haunted Mansion. And of course this tombstone, oh, this is a really cool tombstone. If you haven't stopped and stared while you're in line, it's Madame Leota's. And I'm not going to ruin the surprise. You have to enjoy it yourself because it is a cool tombstone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just sit there like the rest of the tombstones out there. <laughs> it gives back. <laughs> I love it. I love watching it and I love watching the guests react. I, there's guests who don't know that what it's going to do. And then especially kids or young people, you see them, see it happen. And I'm like, like having a hard time not spoiling it. Just <laughs> want to make sure we're not talking about the same thing. We but, are. Okay. 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 <laughs> Go to Disney World and check out Madame Leota's tombstone or tell us what you think in the comments. Um, I'm sure there's little videos if yeah. you can't get there. Um, so you can see what it does for yeah. sure. <laughs> Everyone knows, right? I mean, all right. <laughs> I'm sure everybody knows. <laughs> But I don't like to say because I love watching people freak out about it is the fun. yeah because they'll just glance over me like 
what did I just see? They literally do that. Yeah. It's so cool. It's also a problem for some people because they don't like the people waiting to see it. But me, I don't have a problem with that. I'm the per usually the person waiting. Well, I mean, technically, you could just stand there and watch it True. and let people go. Yeah, because you, yeah, you yeah. stand behind the closed door for a while. Yeah, but we all got to be patient to enjoy some magic, right? There you go. <laughs> but that is this week in Disney. That's our week. And I hope you guys are enjoying Valentine's Day. Tell us what you're up to. Are you doing something special today? And uh, tell us about the rest of your week if you hate Valentine's Day, because <laughs> there's some people who don't like Valentine's Day. That's, That's totally fine. <laughs> we get ya. Um, but wow. yeah, it's, it's a totally We're here for you. fantastic week. Otherwise, so much to watch and enjoy. So tell us what you think in the comments. We love hearing from you guys. Thank you. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.